Hi, this is Joe again. This is the second video of Saturday. Just to show you what the downstairs front room looks like. See the partition here. See the chimney. And we got the three windows. Let me get in the corner. Kind of. Sorry, don't want to make you dizzy. But what I've done is I removed the window in the casement from each of the three windows that are here and kind of gives you an idea. There's some interesting things about this. One is, as I said before, uh, the way you might frame a window is not the same in post and beam as it would be in a stick built house which we have discussions about all the time here. Basically, when the posts have to be in a certain location, that's it. Now, I ordered standard window sizes. If I had ordered custom window sizes that required no adjustment whatsoever on the part of any post, some of those might have taken weeks longer to get delivered, and I'm under a deadline. This one here is the east-facing one. And then on the left side here, you can see something very interesting which they did, which is a traditional carpenter's technique. The posts were a little bit too close to each other. Didn't make the tolerance for the rough opening. So they got a hammer and a saw and a chisel. And they chiseled out about two inches off the post lengthwise to make it fit and it turns out this one fits our window size. There were shims and things in some of these but they're gone now. Next one here is this one is perfect uh, in terms of the rough opening. They don't uh, both of them have something in common which is if you look at the bottom there's no sa saddle for the window to seat itself upon. And that's what we're talking about when we say no window framing. There should be a level board there that goes from one uh, stud to the next. And then when you put the window, you sit it on that. And if the board is level and the window is level, then you don't need to do any more leveling. But that's completely missing. Likewise, over here and over here. So we're going to have to figure out what we want to do with that. It's probably not a good idea. It's, this one here is on the end, but with these two, they are part of the supporting wall. Now they're in between beams, and the beams are doing the weight. So a, core, a case could be made for saying it doesn't make any difference. And in fact, those windows were there for more than 100 years. Seemed to work okay, except the fact that they were old and leaky. Um... So who knows? But now this third window has something very interesting about it, which is it's actually an inch too narrow for the rough opening of the other windows. From this distance, it looks the same. But if you measure it, you try to, if you were, going to, if you were to just get the new window out of the plastic and try to pop it in, it would be a no-go. So what we're going to have to do is uh, shave out or chip out one of those similar to the way this one was done in order to make them all going. And so what will happen is I don't really feel like doing it today. It's hot, it's muggy, it's going to thunder shower. I was up early and motivated, but now I'm the heck with it. And then, so probably tomorrow morning I'll get up, chip that other thing out. I'm going to have to decide if I want to go get some studs at Home Depot or somewhere so that we can build up those pieces or what. Um, and uh, I got to call and see when they're open. Uh, but that's it. Now I have a funny story to tell, which is I have the tools of the trade. Pretty much most of what I have done here has been with one size crowbar or cat's paw or another, plus a sawzall. Uh, demolition is not a precision uh, part of the exercise. Uh, we are 
using the sawzall to cut through all kinds of things and speed it up, but at some point you got to unnail everything that was nailed in securely by the person who put it there. So the crowbar is pretty much it. Now, in the last six weeks, I have used each of these crowbars a zillion times without incident. But this morning on the fourth window, um, I had something where I was trying to jerk something out with a crowbar and let the crowbar do the work, but then I put some extra oomph in it and the board I was working on broke, released all the pressure, and that's how I hit myself in the face with my own crowbar. Uh, it was severe enough that I had to sit down for a minute or two, and yes, it was bleeding. Uh, which, because I'm on atrial fibrillation and I take a blood thinner, it's like, oh God, I hope I didn't just cause whatever I'm going to hemorrhage from. But it has it has stopped. But in the meantime, um, you know, who knew that that board was that brittle? So now, basically, that's the story of the day. Catch you later. Bye.